We should never allow the government to decide what is acceptable speech and what is unacceptable speech. Um, we, should, we should penalize behaviors, not opinions, and not speech. Uh, if you start trying to regulate speech, you start trying to regulate uh, thoughts, you start trying to regulate beliefs rather than behaviors, uh, there's no way that you're not going to abridge the constitutional rights of millions of Americans.
welcome everybody to this special video about the 50th anniversary of the very first lunar mission to the moon in 1969. Uh, there's a lot of hype you're hearing on television and uh, pretty much everywhere on the internet that they must go back to the moon again. And really it's only because they're trying to make a statement about the fact that women feel that they must be dominantly more uh, uh, set in history as having done everything that a man had um, and more than likely the so-called moon base they're talking about they're going to put up on uh, on the moon you have China you have Russia now you have America itself who's saying we must create a moon base and it will probably all be dominantly women who run it and uh, I laugh because I think of this television show, Jer Jerry Anderson made a story like uh, uh, very similar to what he did later on Space 1999, but it was called UFO. And on UFO, it was run entirely by women. And you had the most ridiculous outfits, and I think this is very, very relevant to today because women think, we're more mature, we're more intellectually uh, superior mentally and physically to a man. So on UFO they had the women wearing purple um, wigs, many, many, many skirts, uh, silver metallic type of uh, blouses, and uh, you know, high heel boots. And I was thinking, that's exactly what they should do when they make this moon base on the moon. They should have women to show how absolutely retarded they really are by having them to simulate the same clothing that Jerry Anderson showed them wearing in the television series UFO. Um, but really that's not the reason why I'm doing the video. I'm just trying to emphasize why they think it's so important that we go back to the moon. It's not because we can learn anything else. It's a, it's a gender status quo that women must be able to say they've done everything a man has in history. Um, and beyond that, I guarantee you, the second most significant group on the moon, other than women, will be blacks and homosexuals. Bi bisexual, transgender, all of the abnormal, unnatural individuals who have now a, uh, a status quo, a, um, a voice within the society, the degenerate society we live in, they will be there on the moon when they make this base. So you're going to have three groups. You're going to have women, period. Blacks will be the second groups. And then you'll have transgender bisexuals. And there will probably, under no circumstances, be any white men on the moon. There won't be any men, period. Because that's what women believe. They've got to have, they've got to have their say about what happens. But they're also going to emphasize that it's about themselves and nobody else matters. Nobody else counts. And I say let them, let them run the moon. Because when they have to do all that physical labor, if not intellectual, they're not going to have any guy to, to, to back themselves up for, to get help for the things that obviously they can't do themselves, physically or mentally. Uh, but um, another reason for the video is I really wanted to bring up some things in the video that I have recently found looking over a lot of the videos that have been released by uh, Spacecraft Films. They are the only company who have been given access to all of the National Archives of NASA's uh, television footage of all the Apollo missions. And I found some rather odd um, visuals of at least Apollo 12. This was the very next mission after Apollo 11, and it was the same year. It was actually sometime around November or December of 1969. So. You're talking four, maybe five months after Apollo 11 reached the moon that we went back. Um, you had uh, Pete Conrad talking about different things that he saw during the mission. And we saw 
the second stage, which had the limb, uh, they took it out of the of the the launcher itself, and I saw a flashing, spinning object directly above the uh, the outer casing of where the limb was inside the second stage, and I'm going to emphasize it in this video. And my question to anybody who knows about space exploration is what was it? I contend it was a UFO because of the way it stayed in its position. Now people are going to say, well, in, uh, inertia kept it in that same location, but if you watch it, it started floating off to the right slightly, but it was still spinning and it was still relatively in the same place that it had been when they started to see it. But P. Conrad never said what it was. He never implied what is this object? Why is it spinning? Why is it in the same relative position the uh, uh, the entire scene? Uh, so I'm going to show that in the video. And also, um, there is the most significant thing. To me, it's, it's a sad fact that they say there's no footage that exists. When they did the first trans-vehicular transfer between the capsule and the limb, uh, because after they connected it together, you had Armstrong and Buzz Aldwin had to go through this tunnel and they had to take what they call the probe, and this is basically the cap of the capsule. They had to take that out so they could get access to the limb's entrance and go in, and there's this tunnel there. Well, I was three years old in 1969 when we went to the moon, and I saw that. And it's really the only thing to this day I still remember about the mission. They had glowing lights inside this tunnel, and as they were moving into the limb, you saw that tunnel lit up and so they could see where they were going. And uh, all that footage has been lost according to spacecraft films. None of that exists. None of the in-flight uh, recordings that were made uh, survived. Um, an oddity beyond oddity is that you have to this day, it's uh, floating around on the internet, there's audio footage of some odd sounds that were heard on the Apollo 11 mission. This is Apollo Control. Still no explanation of the weird noises emanating from uh, Apollo 11, if indeed it is from Apollo 11, and it's reported from network that it's uh, being received on the downlink uh, at two different stations in the manned spaceflight network. Perhaps uh, it will all shake out later in the mission as to what these uh, strange noises are. We'll come back up again as conversation is resumed with Apollo 11. Now 160,410 nautical miles out from Earth, traveling at 4,228 feet per second. At 154 hours, 5 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. Apollo 11, Houston, you sure you don't have anybody else in there with you? Houston, Apollo 11, say again, please. Uh, we had some strange noises coming down on the downlink, and uh, it sounded like you had some friends up there. Where'd, where'd the white team go during their off hours, anyway? Just say again. And people have said on my channel lately, uh, oh, well, we found out it was just a joke. The crew of Apollo 11, the Eagle, and Columbia simulated the sound effects 
and try to make people believe that it was it was an alien communication of some kind. And now they're saying, well, it was just a practical joke. They were doing it on uh, mission control. They were trying to make them think, what's this odd noise happening? Well, anyway, there's no visual record of any of that stuff happening on the mission that exists. You only have certain audio bites of it that exists today, and I've done other videos on my channel about these strange sounds. I contend from hearing these sounds that it was potentially it was an alien race that had picked up transmissions from Earth over the years and they were using sounds they picked up from television and radio at that time and they were trying to use it to communicate with us and they were using uh, sound effects that they heard from like uh, an old uh, police crime show where they were playing the sounds of, of, a, uh, of a siren going off. Then you had something that was definitely uh, alien making these totally weird noises and I think they were trying to communicate with us and saying this is how we speak and we heard these communications uh, from Earth and they sound so similar to us and that's what they were doing. They were trying to reach out and communicate with us about how they communicate, that it sounds so much alike they thought, well, let's try to communicate with these earthlings on our own. And that's what I think we're hearing, although people say, no, nah, that's totally crazy, you're an idiot, it's, 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 uh, it's sounds that the crew made to uh, kind of confuse mission control of where this stuff was coming from, what it was, everything else. Um, but I thought that was interesting, no visual record exists of anything. The, uh, the transfer from uh, the capsule to the limb, none of that exists. And yet I know as a child I saw it live on television. Um, my father had me sit in front of the television during certain key times that they were going to the moon. And one of these times we were all watching it together, uh, of the uh, trans um, vehicular transfer between the, the the capsule and the limb when the two astronauts went through the tunnel and they were going back uh, or going into the limb itself in order to prepare for the the lunar landing. Um, so they they aired all kinds of stuff during the time of the first lunar mission to the moon, and now they're saying none of it exists. And I know I've seen a video called. For All Mankind, this is a documentary that was made in the mid to late 80s by National Geographic Society. I have yet to find the copy I have, but I was going to go back and look and see if I could find any of this footage. Because I still say that I remember seeing that shot. Maybe the reason Spacecraft Films doesn't have it is because it's actually owned now by National Geographic Society. Uh, because most likely they filmed it probably on on 16 millimeter film instead of actually recording it on a videotape and so now you have NASA saying we don't have any of it but yet it was on film and probably National Geographic got a, uh, a copyright to hold all that footage for themselves and nobody else can show it except National Geographic that could have been what happened now nobody can see it except in excerpts that they showed in that special two-hour movie called For All Mankind. Now you've got Spacecraft Films has just released another video uh, for the 50th anniversary and it's basically um, the history of Apollo television. That's the name of it. The first flight to the moon. And I got it but I'm pretty sure it's not going to be any different from the actual DVD re release that they made uh, where it, it, it overviews at least four hours of footage that they had obtained from National, uh, NASA. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration, they got all the footage that they have on their DVDs from them because they are the originator owners of all that stuff. Uh, and this other version is supposed to be three hours. That tells you, and then they say, oh, it's going to have all kinds of new exclusive stuff with it. I'm like, well, maybe they acquired it finally from National Geographic of this uh, transfer, uh, the vehicular transfer between the capsule and the limb. I'm hoping so. But um, in this video I'm showing you visuals. I'm going to over uh, expose them or, or, or you know, 
phase myself out and I'm going to show you the pictures so that you can at least see these things and uh, maybe you'll leave comments of what you might have thought these things were but in Apollo 12 when they did the vehicular transfer it is nothing compared to what I remember seeing I've gone through every other mission except for 13 I haven't gone through 13 itself but none of the other missions from uh, 14 through 17 they never show that vehicular transfer in any of the other DVDs because I bought all of the other ones that spacecraft films released to this day I haven't found that footage that I remember seeing as a child on television that night when they were actually getting ready to descend to the lunar surface um, this shirt is Apollo 11 1969 I found this shirt on eBay they were marketing special shirts to commemorate the 50th anniversary so this is probably going to be a collector item one day you know it has at the bottom of the shirt it has uh, the NASA logo it says 1969 on it it can't blow the shot up any more than this that's why you can't see all of it but um, I, uh, I've done other videos in the last couple of years relating to how the Apollo missions trashed the moon every mission you can see the astronauts just uncaringly throwing different things, in instruments, uh, failed experiments. They just toss them into the air and litter the lunar surface. And, and I've got one guy already who commented about it saying, oh, well, this is space exploration. They're allowed that. And I'm like, mankind does this everywhere he goes. He trashes wherever he's lucky enough to go to. And that's true of the earth. It's totally wasted. It's trashed now because of mankind himself. So guess what? We go to another planet for the first time, and what happens? In the case of the missions we went to on the moon, we flushed it. We trashed it. Well, all this graffiti and, and garbage that we brought up there. And I said in my last video about this that we should have been considerate enough to bring back any garbage that they discarded on the lunar surface if anything be nice, neat about it and put it with the limb so that when you left at least it would be there instead of having been chunked in the in in the debris field of uh, wherever they were working or doing experiments and they never did that either so I don't think God is too happy mankind trashed the only other planet he's allowed us to go to uh, one thing that I think should be mentioned about the the fact that we're overemphasizing returning to the moon is that have you noticed they've dropped the whole subject about Mars I think it's because finally people are starting to realize there is no technology that we have in existence that could actually get us to Mars with current resources we don't have a, a, a spacecraft that can hold enough oxygen food water fuel resources to get us there so now they're thinking, well, you know, maybe maybe some people are right, like me, for example. I said that. I said, we're not going to get to the moon because there's no way we can get there with current technology. Now they're saying, well, let's just emphasize about going back to the moon and creating a moon base up there. Has anybody seen Austin Powers? What was a moon base? It was basically them taking the same concept they were saying about Mars. We, we rocket ship up prefabricated cubicles, uh, artificial uh, environment, uh, you know, space pods or whatever that you could drop on the moon and then we could actually activate them when we got there and then live inside these, these cubicles. They've done that on five or six movies about Mars anyway. The moon base, as was originally conceived, would be uh, we would interconnect a massive space station on, on on the moon surface and all of these interconnecting sections would occupy uh, in an environment for people to work to live have a main mission section like Jerry Anderson space 1999 uh, where everything would be centrally located so everybody doing the work they're doing all over the base would all be centrally placed in one 
central core area, and then that's where people would know what's going on everywhere else. The idea of us having like space shuttle eagles that would transport us to other planets or we'd be able to do excavations of the lunar surface and all that, I don't think that's going to ever happen because we don't have the technology even now to bring more than one or two spacecraft somewhere and to make up a, a fleet of spacecraft that could transport you everywhere on the moon. <laughs> that's like 2001, Stanley Kubrick said well, we're going to one day be able to make shuttles that can transport us to different places and all this. It's like, that's, that's totally science fiction. There is no technology that will probably ever exist to do that. But I, um, I was fascinated with space and I always did want to be an astronaut. And then over time I found out in 1972 they ended the, the lunar missions. And it kind of wiped my whole viewpoint about wanting to be an astronaut out. Because... I thought, why am I going to do this and study all my life to be an astronaut and we're not going to go back? We're not there. We're never going to go back. These lucky astronauts who did go to the lunar surface are the only ones in history. Now you got women, you got gays, you got blacks, you got all these degenerates, I call them, because, you know, Hillary Clinton was calling everybody in America a basket full of deplorables. Do you remember that? She was saying, the people who are voting for Trump are morons. They're idiots. Well, guess what? That proves women are the morons because of how they destroyed our nation, how they destroyed the world, and now they're the ones saying we're going to go to the to the moon. We're going to we're going to create our own idea of what we think utopia ought to be, and it's going to be the people we want to go up there. Uh, I'm sure the Democrats are on board with this idea because it's them that have been trying to destroy President Trump. They're trying to destroy everybody else who has, uh, and yet they still pretend like what Omar said about 9-11 was totally okay to say uh, those people destroyed the, the, the trade centers. Those people, in other words, she won't say what she is herself. She is a Muslim. She is an Islamic radical because all Muslims believe what their Quran says, and the Quran says... If you don't believe our religion, lop off your head or lop off their heads. That is what Allah tells every Muslim. And that's what Cortez is probably herself, even though she's Mexican. Uh, they all seem like they're just this little tight community. They call it the squad. That's because all of them have the same opinions maybe of a global government system. The same thing Obama is advocating for right now. And that's why I say these people represent those who are over, over emphasizing that we must go back to the moon, we must create a space station there. And when it happens, they're the ones that's going to have a say of what should be happening, who should be going there. Um, when Obama was president, he was saying, we're going to offer a one-way trip to Mars. We're going to land you on the polar ice caps, we're going to have cubicles set up, you're going to live there, you're going to recreate a oxygen environment and we're going to create experiments that will allow you to, to to grow food there. They've done this several times in motion pictures and all it was was to show that Obama's a moron, he's an idiot because it's not even a conceivable idea that it would work because we have to get there first. And they haven't even figured the, the, um, this, the, the logistics of doing something like that. They don't even have a, a spacecraft that can hold as much supplies as is needed to get there. So now he's thinking, well, let's get off that for a while and let's just start talking about global warming again. Let's get somebody up there on the moon. Uh, China already sent probes, which I scratch my head about to this day because we've never seen any footage of what they actually did there. Uh, meaning that uh, of all nations on this planet that ever was able to get to the moon with success was the United States. And I think we're the only ones in history that will ever have done that because there's so much mess in the world today that you can't do these kinds of projects unless you got it together. In the 60s, we still had it together. America was still one of the greatest nations on earth. Not true now because of Barack Obama because of the fact that the only gender they're pushing in the country right now is women. And women by themselves cannot do anything unless they can use a man as a guinea pig. 
And you see that everywhere you look on television and movies, everywhere. That's why I say Apollo 11 and the Apollo missions probably are going to be the last decent thing mankind ever did. Because at that time, it was still men who were working. The men were in control of the systems. Men did it because they had the, the, the intellect and they had the physical stamina to endure all of the things that they go through. I haven't heard of anybody coming forward who says, I'm a woman and I'm a test pilot and I can do this, I can do that. It's like you got the women of the world saying, we can do this because uh, somehow or another we're going to manipulate a number of men who can actually help us do these things and make people believe it and therefore it'll work. And that's the joke because it can't work if you as a woman think you can do it by yourself. Yeah, you can create a human life by using artificial insemination. You can pervert how God intended it all to be, but in the long run, the only outcome is its failure. Just like on the first day God created Adam and Eve. Who failed in that relationship? Eve, because she was deceived, she was beguiled by Satan. And now to this day, women are like, no, I'm not hearing that. Okay, it's fact. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to admit it. I'm just going to accept the fact that we're now in control of the world again and we're going to screw it up again because we're faced with the same reality that it was our fault to begin with. That's what is going to happen if we try to go back to the moon and have women to do it. If women go back and they say we're going to we're going to make this same work. We're going to show the world. We're going to show American men. They're nothing. We're everything. It's a failure from the start, folks. So please, if you want to see how great America used to be, of why we could actually go to the moon in the first place under the Apollo program, go back and watch the first videos that were made. Those represent what America was. And that's why we were able to do those things because men were in control of them. Men were doing it because they know how it works. Now you have homosexuals, you've got men who are impotent, who don't care about anything except believing that women must control the world, they must control the family, they must represent the family unit. These are the people who are now supposedly intellectually smart enough to say men are nothing because we have to let women control it all. Ain't gonna work folks. It's never worked. And that's what that's what is, is doomed to failure every time when you think a woman is the only thing that matters. If you don't get a man back in control, put him in the seat where he's supposed to be and let him do what God intended for man to be and that was be head of the, ha of the family, it will never work again. Apollo will be the end of anything about NASA, about our space program. And let me say this in a, in a closing word. It was Barack Obama, by the way, he dismantled and he destroyed NASA as a space agency. Before he left office, he said, I am totally defunding NASA. The only part of NASA, folks, that still exists is the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. That's it. There is no NASA as a system. Now the United States depends on Russia. It depends on NASA's uh, joke of saying Spaceship One, the Virgin airline company that started this stuff. They're going to let them transport us to the moon. They're going to let us go to Mars. They're gonna... It's like, what happened to the government's own space program system? Barack Obama destroyed it. And it was his intention to destroy it. Why? Because all he cares about is using that money that was supposed to be used for these space exploration missions. He put it into his failure called Obamacare. He put it into these joke systems that exist in America today, which supposedly are supposed to help everybody in the world, from Mexico to Latin America to all the other countries, to get free Medicare. And why? Because they think, the better it is for these people that are coming into the United States, the faster we can co completely control everybody, microchip them, put marks on their hands and on their foreheads, and the global government system, the New World Order, totally comes to fruition, and therefore Barack Obama is your leader, he is your messiah, he is the Antichrist. 
end of discussion. Barack Obama destroyed NASA. He is going to destroy the world because that's his only intent. Make himself the global dictator he has always shown himself to be and then destroy everything else about what was a nation once called the greatest world government and that was freedom, that was capitalism, that was free enterprise, liberty. That was called the United States of America. Now it's called the United Socialist States of America. And why? Because the Democratic Party has destroyed us. We have been totally annihilated by a government service that is called the Democratic Socialist Party. It is communist founded, it is communist run, it is a dictatorship run by Barack Obama, and as long as he still holds the Antichrist, the Messiah, adore him, they worship him, as long as that continues, we can never be the once great nation we used to be, because people believe that globalism, world dictatorship, global acceptance of the new world order is the only way for our country and the world to be unified. This is what the Democrats continually tell people. We got to let these immigrants come in free of charge and they can do anything they want to. Totally destroy the infrastructure of America and all because of the fact they think it's going to make all of us united. It's going to make us all unified. A lie. Lie, lie, lie. And it still is. To this day it's a lie. So remember Apollo, because that's when America was still good. That's when America was still great. Today, there'll never be another Apollo system. There'll never be any kind of a system in America because of Obama, because of the, 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 the democratic socialists. The communists themselves have destroyed everything that was America. Thank you. What I'm about to describe to you, I want to say up front that I am not a prophet, and I don't claim to be one. What I am trying to say in this video today is one thing. What I saw in church was not a hallucination. It was not a figment of my imagination. I was wide awake. We all in the congregation were sitting and praying because the pastor had asked everybody to bow their heads and he was uh, praying basically um, as a pre-prayer to his actual service that he was going to uh, conduct. And it was essentially right after he did the devotional reading of a, uh, a particular section of the Bible, he was going through Psalms. And right after he finished this particular book of the Bible, and I really cannot remember if it was Psalm 93, I think it might have been Psalm 39 or something, but he prayed for those who had died in, uh, in Paris, and it did relate to the terrorists attacking um, in four different places. Uh, there's a hundred and 40, 130 people now confirmed dead as of the time that I'm recording this. And while I was there with my eyes closed, I, I began seeing something. And it, it had no color. It was definitively just an outline of an object in a grayish color there was no color at all. Uh, it's sort of like if you look at a screen and um, somebody projects um, like a transparency on the wall and you just see an outline of something. But this was more than just an outline. It wasn't even actually just a, a photograph of something. This is uh, something I saw that uh, it moved. It rotated in a counterclockwise direction and I, I the first thing I thought was that what I'm seeing is not something my mind could be creating because I'm wide awake I'm not asleep I'm in church 
it was about 10:45, maybe almost, uh, maybe a little after 11 o'clock in the morning, and uh, I had never experienced this before, so I just kept looking at it while my eyes were closed, trying to figure out what is this I'm seeing. What is the significance of why I'm seeing this? As description-wise of how it looked, there's two things that came to my mind. One, what it was was a possible projection of a of an airline uh, engine. And if you know what a jet engine looks like, it's usually made by General Electric, and it has a series of fan blades on it. And anybody who's flown on an airplane or seen anything knows what a jet engine looks like. It turns in a uh, counterclockwise direction. And that's what it looked like. But I didn't see anything of an outline other than this spinning, what looked like it was teeth inside of a circle. And it had a definitive center rod or shaft that came out from the middle of it and it was uh, kind of like at an angle so I knew that I wasn't looking head on at this thing and the prayer continued for about a minute and a half maybe two minutes and during this time as I was watching it or looking at it which I had no real choice since my eyes were closed it began to change as far as its center section, like it was no longer fan blades or teeth. It became what looked like a, just a, a, a sponge. To me, it looked like a sponge because it had all these little holes all over it. But it had still no color, so I can't say that it, you know, it, it was just sort of like the texture of it looked sort of like what a sponge looks like. Solid all around with little holes here and there in it. And so when the prayer ended, I had no other choice but to open my eyes because now the service was continuing. And uh, anyway, I I just didn't think to go and try to close my eyes again to see if it would reappear, but it, I never saw it again after that. So it lasted about two minutes. And during the time that I saw it, the only thing that I was thinking was that here we're praying to the Lord and maybe he was trying to project something to me